Hi guys, it's Nancy, and as I said, I was going to do a review of these alcohol markers that were sent to me. Um, they were sent to me by a company called Parku. Um, I will put a link for you down below. I've been playing with them for a couple days. You saw me use them on the kitchen sink stamps video. Um, Leah has also been trying these out, and I gotta say, for an inexpensive marker, they're really not too bad. Um, now, Parku did send these to me, so I did not pay for them. Like I said, I will put a link for you. I thought they were going to send me a discount code, but the markers are only $11.99 on Amazon, so no discount code. Sorry, guys. But here's how we were looking at them. Um, you get 36 colors. They come in this really nice packaging. I will tell you, like I said, when um, I agreed to sign up, these markers were sent to me in about two days, and I believe they were shipped from Kentucky. I do believe they are made in China. Um, and it's got very basic information on here. It just says they're fine point markers. It does say they're made in China. Um, but what I liked was, again, somebody who's doing a lot of arts and crafts around the house with smaller children. If you are a teacher, if you do arts and crafts with other people. And, you know, we all like to keep our good supplies to ourselves. So these markers I will definitely be using with Leah. Like I said, she's already started to use them. Because they're permanent... You can use them on any non-porous or pore surface. So here she colored these um, wood masks with them. Um, you can color on plastic with them. We do a lot of rock painting, so we're going to use them on there. But again, cheap, inexpensive alcohol marker. So I have just a piece of the Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth uh, paper, which is kind of like an alcohol safe paper, alcohol ink safe paper. And I'm going to stamp out this Hero Arts poinsettia stamp. I am using the Brutus Monroe Raven ink. It's been pretty good ink to use for alcohol coloring and water coloring, by the way. And we will just swatch some of these colors out and See what we can get with coloring this image in. Now, I am by no means comparing these to Copic markers, but I think for a good set to have around the house for, like I said, kids' art supplies, somebody who just needs a basic set of markers. I always needed markers at work, um, so this would have been a good set just to keep in my desk at work. So I'm going to give that just a second to dry while I pull out some of these colors. Now, there are two things that I did not like. Okay, what I do like, number one, is the price point. Like I said, I believe they're $11.99 on Amazon. I will put the link down before below for you. I like this case. The case, they all come nicely packaged, have this little snap so I can put them in the drawer, not have to worry about them. And pulling them out, um, I do also have a Sharpie marker here to compare them to. And that's pretty much what you can compare these to. I mean, they're almost identical in size. The Sharpie marker has that alcohol smell to it. So that would be the Sharpie marker. And then this would be the Parku marker. So you can see the nibs are about the same. These have that kind of kind of that same alcohol smell. I mean, there's really nothing there. They say fine point, so you can get a fine point, but if you turn the marker to the to the edge, you can get a thicker line. And so yeah, that's how I would look at these as like a Sharpie marker, a Bic marker, something like that. The one thing I noticed when playing with these is that the lids don't necessarily snap and stay on. Um, the Sharpie markers just have kind of a, a tighter fit on the lid, but you know what? That's not a big deal. I just take the lid off. Um, maybe as they get used a little bit, it seems like there might be a protective cap inside there. Hold on. I think there might be something inside the cap, maybe to keep the markers from drying out. I can't see inside that cap. Let me grab one that's a little bit lighter in color. Okay, that's why. So inside the cap... Yes, that explains it then. So inside the cap, there is a smaller barrel. Can you guys see that? And so that's why when you try to put this on the end, it kind of smacks that. Now see this one staying on, no problem. I think once you use them, they'll stay on. But that's kind of neat that there is a cap inside there, so that'll keep your markers from drying out. That's pretty neat. Okay, 
There's no numbers or names of the colors. You just have the lids to go by, but you get a nice variety of colors. So let me just flip this over and swatch some of these out real quick. And then what I'll probably do is, what a lot of artists do is they swatch a color out and then they take a little hole punch. I'll show you here what they do. They take a little hole punch. Yes. And they punch out that color and then they take a little dab of glue and put that on the marker. I'm just gonna put it on the lid here. And then that way, when you go to pull these markers out, cause you can't always go by the color on the cap. It could be completely different. Now the red is pretty close, so we'll leave that one alone. Orange seems to be orange. But I noticed when Leah and I were doing some of the colors yesterday that some of them didn't match up with the lids. So you just want to, you know, if you're going to be really using these for coloring, you want to know what colors they are for sure. Swatch those out. Um, my sister likes to do Zentangle. So like here is a perfect one. This is a really dark orange, and on here it just looks like kind of a regular orange. My sister likes to do Zentangle, and she draws on the walls in her house. Now, obviously, she does it on a wall that not everybody's going to see, you know, guests and stuff like that. But um, this will be a perfect kit to get her for Christmas so that she has all of these markers and different colors that she can do her Zentangle, her shading. See, that's like a kind of a neon pink. Um, again, for craft people that are doing basic crafting, Leah is starting to pick up on her crafting skills now. So this is a good set for her to, um, without me going out and buying Copics or Spectrum Noirs or anything like that for her, this is a good set for her to have for her school projects. Um, Xavier can use these. Okay, so here's another one. This is a bright fuchsia color and the, the pen lid looks purple. Now this one matches that color more closely and this is a lighter one. So I would definitely, if you're going to use these, swatch these out, do some kind of a swatch chart for yourself, either keeping this in with the markers or, so this one's kind of a wine color. It almost looks chocolatey on the swatch here. All right, I'm just gonna do these two more. I'm not gonna do all of them. Nice variety of colors. They are very bright. Um, they seem to have a felt tip barrel, which is good. So pretty traditional in terms of markers. And like I said, you have a lot of blues, greens, browns, a couple of grays and a black there as well. I wanna see how they will color out on this little poinsettia. Now there are little um, clips on the lid, so if you're the type of person that keeps your markers in like a pocket protector or something like that, but just keeping them nice and neat in this case, having those little clips on there is pretty good too. Seems to be at least um, one of every color has a light and a dark, so if you wanna try to do some blending leave a couple of these reds out and see if see how well they're going to blend. I also have a blender marker, a Copic blender marker that I'm going to try to see how they do there. And again, not trying to compare these as an artist quality, but as an inexpensive alternative to alcohol markers. This would be your traditional red. I 
And I've done a lot with this stamp in the last couple days just because it has a lot of fine details. So it stamps out very nicely. Coloring it in is very easy to do. Um, so it's just always a go-to stamp when it comes to holiday, Christmas cards, things like that. And you know, you can do red poinsettias, you can do cream colored poinsettias. This looks really pretty when it has um, glitter added to it. And it does come with, or you can get a matching die with it. I think they actually sell this now as a color layering set. So you can color it and cut out multiple layers and pop it up and give it like this kind of 3D floral look. So I'm just laying down this base. So far, so good. I don't see any brush strokes. I think it matters too what kind of paper you're using and what kind of um, ink you're using. You want to use an alcohol safe ink. So the inks I found for that are either Memento Black ink, the um, Crafter's Companion Black ink, or like I said, the Brutus Monroe Detailed Raven ink. They work out pretty good. So this is kind of a wine color. And this is also, so this is more of a purpley wine. This is more like a red wine. A Merlot. I'm just going to kind of darken the veining and underneath where those leaves are, where there would be a shadow. And then go back in with the brighter red and see if it, um, See if they blend out and we can still see brush strokes or if they color okay. Maybe you're someone who wants to try out alcohol marker coloring. I don't have a whole bunch of alcohol markers. Um, I just started to dabble into them. So I buy a couple of Copics here and there. I did get um, the Arteza markers from Arteza and I have some of the Spectrum Noir markers, which I did purchase myself and started out my collection. But an inexpensive marker like this, you don't have to worry about a refill. You know, you just kind of toss it when you're done with it. I mean, $11.99 for a set of 36. If you're looking for that last minute gift idea for somebody, you can start with these. These will be a good set to take on the go. Um, if you're going on vacation, traveling, a lot of people are gonna be going to families and things like that, just to keep yourself occupied. Take them, keep them at your summer house, your winter house, wherever. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back in with that bright red and try to kind of blend those colors out. And again, I'm using the Spectrum Noir alcohol marker paper, which is super smooth and it gives your markers some leeway in terms of blending. That's what's great about alcohol markers and the paper and the ink that you use is if you get everything in the right combination, it really doesn't matter what kind of supplies you use as long as you use them appropriately. So using good ink, good paper will help these markers. Now you could have the crappiest paper and you use good markers on them and it's not going to make a difference because that paper is just going to bleed everywhere. It's going to be too dry and not allow the markers to blend. Um, then that's going to be the, the paper's fault, not the marker's fault. Same thing with ink. If you don't have an alcohol proof ink, you use regular ink, that ink is going to smear and bleed everywhere. And then just going back in with that lighter red, the first red I used, and just, again, blending those colors. 
colors out wherever I put the darker marker. Just going back over it. Uh, these do not have a brush tip or a wide tip or anything like that. So you are limited there in terms of artistic ability. Let's go in with some of these greens and see what we can do with these leaves. really no um, odor coming out of these markers either. I thought there might be, but just like using Copics or Spectrum Noir markers or something like that, um, there's no harsh odor or anything. You stick it up your nose, you're gonna smell it, but I'm not noticing anything while coloring with them. The fine tip does make it easier to get into some of those tighter areas, but the wide end if you hold that marker at an angle it makes it easier to fill in and color those areas From what I read online, this company does have other pens and markers and things like that. So it looks like they're kind of following like in the Arteza standpoint where they want to be an inexpensive option for crafters, um, hobbyists, things like that. So if you are looking for an inexpensive set, like I said, $11 and change, not bad for 36 colors. And... Even if you went out and bought a set of Sharpies or Bix, you're going to spend more than that. Now, the key with these markers, too, is any alcohol markers is you want to continue to work with them. If you just lay down one layer of color, then you're going to see brush strokes. You're going to see uneven coloring. So when you put more medium down, more marker down, more ink down. It's going to blend more. It's going to saturate that paper more. Then it's going to get better and better. Alcohol markers do take some time to learn and color, but that's what makes them look so amazing. That's why you don't have brush strokes. That's why you have um, a more realistic 3D kind of look. Because once you master how to lay these colors down and how to layer them, and um, blend them and usually more is better because you get a lot more um, shading and movement of that color it just smooths it out that's why artists prefer these kinds of uh, markers and this kind of color medium because there's no brush strokes um, you know it's just easier to make it look good but it does take work. It's not, it's not anything that's going to happen overnight. It just takes some practice. I can definitely tell where I've gone over it and blended it. it um, blend the colors. It does look better versus leaving the color alone and not blending it. The greens are really blending nicely, a little nicer than the reds. I think these two greens are just closer in color. I do wish maybe that they had a name on the markers or a name on the box, but 
again, for what, you know, what Leah's going to be using them for, we're going to be using them for around the household. It's not a big deal. So, yeah, there we go. Let me see here if we can use our Copic um, blender here and see what kind of a difference that makes. Maybe you have grandkids or nieces or nephews that come over and they come and hang out or you babysit. Now see that moves right away with the blender. Um, and you wanna have a set that they can use or spare set. You know, we always have like kids art supplies that we don't want them using our stuff. And all I'm doing here with the blender is just kind of lifting some of that color and moving it out of the way, which lightens it a little bit. And then over off to the side, I just kind of clean my brush off. Definitely lifts that color out. They actually kind of almost get a different color out of it. It's another way to stretch these markers. It's because now it looks like we just have like a lighter red. All right. Oh, that looks pretty good. So there you go, guys. That's my review of these Parku markers. I think they're great for an inexpensive marker. Like I said, they remind me of a Sharpie or a Bic marker. Um, some downsides are that, that the lids don't really stay on. But um, for the price point of $11 and change, I'll link the Amazon website for you. But definitely something, if I were looking for markers, I will keep these in mind, especially at the beginning of the school year when you're stocking up on school supplies versus buying a big set or a Sharpie set for the price point. Not bad. I do like the carrying case. I do like that you get 36 colors in there, but most of all, I do like the price point. And they performed pretty well for what I would be using them for, which is basic crafts and doing stamping around the house. And I'll probably keep these around where the kids can use them. Maybe I'll grab a couple out of there to keep in the car because you never know when you're going to be doing stuff around the garage and things like that. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, post them down below. I will link the markers for you if you want to take advantage of that. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.